Aloha, shalom, salam. We're here for the new moon activation. And for those of you who have been coming here for a long time, you know that we're only doing one activation a month now. For those of you who are just coming here for the first time, sorry, just setting you up. We have been doing these activations every week for some years now, and I'm cutting down to one activation per month, and that's going to be on the new moon only. I came to this decision based on everybody's feedback as to which activation they'd like to do every month, whether that be the new or the full, and everyone pretty much said new moon, and I have to agree. So here we are, new moon eclipse. I was just outside for that eclipse energy, and it was so powerful so interesting to be both so light because you know we're, we're in the desert still very sunny no clouds in the sky but then still have that darkness accompanying it it was such a powerful energy so i trust you're feeling it wherever you are let me know in the comments where in the world you're tuning in from And I'm tuning in from Sedona, Arizona. I'm just going to go ahead and start shuffling while you let me know in the comments, where in the world are you? Feel free to share this video now while we're live with family, friends, maybe a favorite group here on Facebook. Maybe you know someone who's struggling right now and could really use an uplifting message. <laughs> Everyone. And then remember that this recording will go to YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic, for anyone who's not on Facebook. So this is a new moon, new beginning, new cycle. We have an opportunity here to start fresh. So we're going to look at what is our priority focus. And that focus is always meant to be both a challenge and a gift. The focus is the energy we want to look out for. And just the little fun fact, a lot of people will do reversal definitions of cards, explanations of, you know, when you pull the card in reverse, it means the opposite. I don't do this. If you've been following me for a long time, you know that I don't believe in reversals. I believe it's a full spectrum. So whatever energy arises you certainly want to look for how it's manifesting both positively and negatively, not just for your own personal experience in your life, which is always dualistic, but for everyone's because we're a part of a whole, a collective, and the energy is always going to be manifesting on a spectrum. So we want to be aware of how that's happening in our own lives and in the lives of one another because we have to see ourselves in one another if we really want to get anywhere in this world. Okay, so when we pull that focus, remember you want to look for all the ways it may be manifesting both positively and negatively in your life and the lives of those around you. Just going to go ahead and shuffle the Hebrew deck and remember the Hebrew letters work the same way as the tarot. Each one represents a different archetype a different point of focus, a different aspect of self. Very glad to be connecting with you all here for this special message at this potent time. Okay. My nose is a little runny. So beginning with the tarot deck, giving thanks in advance to the archetypes, faces of the one, which is you, me, we, and all things for the message that's about to come through. We are so grateful for this message, for this guidance. Thank you. Okay, out of the whole deck, the focus, which is also the challenge and gift. <laughs> Something that we need to leave behind that is also coming from fear. <laughs> and then with the Hebrew cards, we'll pull the ally of the week, which will be the priority guiding force. But remember, they're all our allies. A 
Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, the focus. Also the challenge and gift. Page of Cups. Cups is the suit of the heart. Water. Emotions. Feelings. I love this for us right now. I love this for us right now. Pages are the youthful aspect of the suits of each of the elements, okay? And here we pulled the Page of Cups. So it's the youthful perspective within the realm of water and emotions and feelings. So I'm going to talk about how this could be manifesting both negatively and positively. As far as negatively, this can look like an immaturity in the way that we give and receive love. <clears throat> it can look like being quick to condemn. It could look like being quick to withhold love. Okay? Or it could, or it could look like... a quick to love in a way that's immature, quick to embrace before really coming from that place of truth, which is ultimate love, the truth at the center of the heart of all hearts. Okay, so it can look like immaturity in that realm, immaturity in the way that we give and receive love, immaturity in the way that we express what it is we think we love even and on the positive end of this archetype when we're embodying this aspect of ourselves which everybody has this aspect there's a reason it's a card in the deck we all have this aspect within us on the positive end it looks like getting in touch with real love all right I, the word agape comes to mind right getting in touch with unconditional love in the heart of hearts, at the center of all centers, that love, which is really just a synonym for truth, for law, which is truth, which is love, which is light. Getting in touch with that ultimate love, carrying that in our hearts and moving from that space. Because when you do, when we, when we do, when we move from that space, it doesn't matter our age or where we're at in our timeline of growth because that truth is timeless. That truth does not discriminate. That love, that light does not discriminate. And if we're really moving from there, we will not be acting prematurely. We will not be acting immaturely. We'll, we will no doubt be acting in ways that express love, which heals all. Love, light, truth that is put into action in ways that will benefit the whole. Okay, I, I'm really feeling the need to stress that these are all synonyms. Truth, love, light, law, true law. True law, which is the truth, which is love, which is light. If we're really operating from there, we can make no mistakes. And in a time where we're so divided, where you're seeing you can take any group of people that have a commonality, yet you will still find division within that group. That's the time that we're living in right now. We're living in prophetic times. But this shows us that no matter where we are, we have one thing in common that can in no way be divided, that can in no way be challenged. When we meet in that place, the heart of hearts, in a space of true frequency of love, light, law, universal law, there can be no mistakes because there are no sides in this place in this place everything everyone is united it cannot be rebuttaled it cannot be argued it cannot be confused because in this space of simplicity where truth is one where we are all united as one there's no argument there is absolutely no argument. And so clearly that's where we're at right now in our individual lives and in our collective life. 
So it's important to look where we may be this amateur, where we may have come out of our center, even the slightest bit to where then all of our expressions are compromised, all of our thoughts, all of our words, and then our expressions are compromised when we come out of that space, even the slightest fit. So if you want to ensure that you're staying grounded in absolute truth in a time where we are being swayed left and right, it's like a tree blowing in the wind, right? But we have to be rooted to the truth. <clears throat> and so we're all kind of just this page of cups right now, right? We're all just doing our best learning every moment, hopefully staying humble through the process. But we're here to move from the page through all the way to the king, to the mastery of that element, to the mastery of this particular element, which here you see is water, the heart, emotions. And in order to do that, we need to move from a space that is unwavering. We need to move from a place of universal truth, not the truth that I heard yesterday or as a child or the truth that I'm hearing today or this person's truth or that person's truth. I'm talking about the absolute truth that we all are one with, that we all are made from the fabric of this truth. The truth that is undeniable, the truth that unites us all if we stay in this space we cannot make mistakes. If we stay in this space, we cannot make mistakes. Because in this space, there's a code revealed to us. If you stay in this space, you begin to experience a pattern, the pattern that is back of all things, the pattern that is within all of our DNA. Don't care where you came from, we all came from one, this pattern is in us all and when you reside in that frequency the pattern becomes clear and you begin to live by this pattern which is a reflection of universal law right you begin to live by this law that protects and preserves the light love truth in all and there are no mistakes when you think speak and act in accordance with this pattern that unites us all. So love from that space. Only from that deepest place within your heart. Forget everything else. Okay. I love this. This is representing the energy of fear, fear-based thoughts, words, and actions that we need to let go of. And it's the Empress. And so many people tend to be biased with certain cards, right? Like, this is a positive card. This is a positive card. Death is negative, right? Like, I think everyone here knows that that's a very limited way to think. And that's not the truth at all. So many of you may not know what the Empress represents in fear on the darker end. She's also known, by the way, as the unveiled Isis, whereas the high priestess before her is the veiled Isis. Okay, so we need to move away from fear-based thoughts, words, and actions that are telling us we are the rightful heir to the throne. We are the royal blood. We are the chosen to sit on this throne above anyone else. It's my birthright, but not our birthright. And how am I making these conclusions? How do I know this? Because we know what the Empress archetype represents in positivity. She represents being a child of the earth and stars. Check out the 12 constellations on her head, the 12 stars on her head. Check out the wheat at her feet, abundance. Abundance is her birthright. Okay, so we know when we connect this archetype to positivity, we know who she represents in all of us but when it becomes dark and you can do this with any of the cards take any of the cards and see them through a lens of separateness consciousness and there you will see the negative aspects of the card which always only serve to bring us back to the positive anyway right 
So if we take those positive qualities and we apply it to a lens of separateness consciousness, we see what we need to leave behind, which is thinking that any one being should suffer, that any one being does not have that birthright while we do. All beings have that right. All beings are children of this earth. All beings are children of the earth and the sky. We are all siblings of the same original light. So we need to leave behind this idea that any one deserves this while another one doesn't. There is only one. Okay, another big message that comes with the Empress in this particular position is this. What is real abundance? Because that's your birthright. That's our birthright. But what is real abundance? Because it's time to really get things straight here. It's time to really prioritize why is here. Real abundance does not look like material things, man-made things. Real abundance is much deeper than this. So we have to remember, first and foremost, abundance is all of our birthright. Everyone deserves abundance. And secondly, we have to redefine what abundance really is in these times as we are experiencing such a challenge globally as a global brother and sisterhood. These are the times when what we define to be abundance becomes clear. These are the times that what we define as true prosperity becomes clear. Where have you been prioritizing materialism in a way that doesn't serve the whole? Where have you not been focused on abundance for all? It's time to leave that behind and it's time to move forward with the right idea. Not just for yourself, but for the one, for the whole, for the collective. Okay. It's funny, I said okay as I'm turning it over. And here we have the cough. Here we have the Hebrew letter cough as the ally. And this is going to be the energy that carries us through a very hard time right now. So really pay attention. Okay. I want you to look at this letter and know that it's flipped on the camera. Okay. Know that it's flipped. So it's going to look different, obviously, when you look it up. So you can feel free to Google it. It's going to be spelled a little funny. So you Google Hebrew letter Q-U-O-P-H. It's not cough, K-A-F. Q-U-O-P-H. And it's connected to Arcanum 19, the sun. <laughs> And the sun, this, the hieroglyphic symbol for this letter is a sun on the horizon, but we don't know if it's rising or if it's setting. And the point is, it doesn't matter because you want to think of this archetype outside of time and space. So what does that mean for us right now? It means looking at this hieroglyphic symbol, right, of the sun on the horizon. Is the sun rising or is it setting? And what does that represent? Are things going into the darkness or is the light returning? How can we move beyond that? How can we reconcile those opposites? How can we see that there are always things dying while there are always things being born? How can we see that through the darkness right now, so much darkness that the world is experiencing at this time in, in many dimensions, right? Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. How can we see the light rising at the same time how can we see the opportunity within the darkness how can we in this intense time not wait till later to see this in hindsight but right now see the sun rising when it feels in our hearts to be setting 
can we remember in the darkest of times that soon after what follows is an opportunity for more light, right? Like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Absolutely. So we're being asked right now to look at the most challenging things in our lives, the most challenging things that we're going through right now. And it's easy to see that on a collective level, right? Like these readings are for the collective. And right now it's really easy to see this for the collective. So look at where we're experiencing the darkest, darkest of moments and see Try your best to see the opportunity there for more unity, for togetherness, for life to continue on and thrive. Not just for life to continue, not just to survive, but to thrive. How can we begin to dig deep to pull out the light that's hidden in the dark right now? Also, a message that comes with this letter is to look at the light that is here right now, the blessings that are in our lives right now, and ask, how did we get here through all the, the work, the inner work that we've done, right? And the work within our communities. Look for the light. How did we get there? Continue on with strength in those activities that brought you to the point of light you're at right now. The blessings that you can see around you. Ask, what did I do to contribute to this blessing in my life, in our lives, in our world? How can I follow that pattern? How can I set down my grief for a moment and remember the positive, remember how we got here, remember how we get to a positive place and keep going even when it feels hard, okay? And it feels like waves, right? It's like grieving and rising, grieving and rising. You don't want to skip your process of grief. There, The grief is just like we talked about. There's light within the dark, right? There's so much power to grieving, it's a necessary process. But what I'm saying is in the moments where you feel well enough to at least move your body, may you move toward a good deed. May you move toward doing a good deed. May you take whatever strength you have in you right now, no matter how little it might be, and use it toward goodness. Use it toward positivity. Grieve as much as you need to. Be in that process. Surround yourself with supportive energy people in your community that can support you and in the moments where you have just enough life force to do something, do something good for the world. And hey, doing something for yourself is doing something for the world. So don't forget that. Take care of yourself because when you take care of you, you take care of we. That's a good deed to do something kind for yourself because you're a part of the whole. So again, through the process of grieving, find moments where you have enough energy to do anything at all and may it be an act of kindness toward yourself or another. We are one, doesn't matter. That's the true light. That's the sun rising. Yeah, so I just want to recap the three cards we pulled here. Okay, challenge right now, page of cups. It's a time for us to go beyond our recent re expressions of love or, or, or recent um, lack of an expression of love, right? It's time for us to move beyond our immaturities in the arena of love, the way that we give and receive love. It's time to reconnect with ultimate love, light, which is truth, which is law universal. And to move from that space so that we be sure, no matter our age, our race, our gender, no matter our outside differences, our physical differences, we're moving from a space that is inclusive of all. We're moving from a space that unifies everyone. And from there, we cannot be wrong in our thoughts, words, and actions. It leaves no room for error because everyone is included in that love. We're moving away from the darker side of the empress that thinks that anyone is not included in the birthright of abundance. It's time to reconsider what abundance means as we look at the suffering of the world today and realign in a profound way with what true abundance is for all. 
And here with the cough, we have the sun either rising or setting, but it doesn't matter because the point is it's always there. It's the light inside. What does the sun represent? The light within all things. So when it feels like it's setting, see it rising again because it is, after all, inevitable. And we don't have to wait for it to physically happen to find the truth in that. We don't have to wait for it to physically happen to begin to manifest the rising of the sun within, on the inside, so that we can begin to feel it in a place that's real. Because when you open your eyes and you look outside of yourself, that's already the result of a past thought. So allow the sun, the light, to arise within you in any moment of darkness. When you're feeling it, when someone else who is only you is feeling it. No, it's always there. Raise it up. Raise it up because you have the power to do that just as our creator makes the sun rise every day, so too do you in every moment have the power to raise the light and shine it from every part of your being into the world. Don't forget. Don't forget, you are that light, truth, love, law, one with it. Stay there and shine that light from the deepest part of yourself out into the farthest reaches of the world, especially to the places that need it the most right now. I pray that everyone in the world can come to these same conclusions by the grace of our one creator, the source of which we are all part. Pray that this truth arises in the hearts of all. Thank you so much for being here and doing this activation with me today. I so appreciate you guys. I know I won't be seeing you for a month. So thank you for your patience as I made this big decision to just be doing one activation a month on the new moon. Um, if you feel touched by this activation, please share it with anyone who's struggling right now, family, friends going through this hard time. Please, please share. And I hope to see you and your family members and your friends that you share this video with next month for the new moon. If you feel called, please uh, consider writing a review, facebook.com slash royalpathtarot. You can leave a star review and write some words, or you can email me a review to info at royalpathtarot.com or you can private message me your words. I just love to hear from you all. Um, I did ship some books out last week so y'all should be receiving them now, any moment now. And if anybody's interested in my books, The Royal Path 1 or 2, please reach out. Please reach out if you're interested on a one -on in a one-on-one -on -one reading um, or any of my classes on occult symbolism in the major arcanum. I have a class, a long class, on each of the major arcanum cards. And thank you to everyone who donated this morning. Before I even went live for the activation, I appreciate you so much. For anyone who's wanting to donate and give back for these activations, you can donate to me on Venmo, Rebecca-Magic. You'll see how to spell my name here, Rebecca, M-A-G-I-C-K. Um, my PayPal link is on my wall here. If you have another method, just reach out to me privately. I'm so grateful for the reciprocation. I appreciate you guys so much. More than anything, I just appreciate being here together, sharing our light in this world at a time where it's needed the most. See you next week for the new moon. Be well, be at peace. Thank you for your prayers.